So we're doing a timeout. This is a left knee arthroscopy. Everybody needs to pay attention during the timeout. I agree, left knee, very important part of the procedure. I double glove, this is a left knee in a 45 year old who has a medial meniscus tear by clinical exam. He's got uh, catching pain, positive McMurray's test with pain and popping. And he also has a localized cyst medially on his MRI scan which shows a meniscus tear degenerative complex. PGY3 resident has prepped and draped and we're putting, palpating the bony landmarks. Um, the knee is at 30 degrees of flexion. And that puts the patella at the correct level so we can move the scope around. If we make that portal in too much flexion, it'll be difficult to getting in and out. And we do the procedure with the knee 30 degree flexed. Blunt probe. Obturator. So now the blunt obturator and 5.5 five cannula are in the joint. You can milk some fluid out of there if there's any intraarticular effusion or hemarthrosis. Lock the 30 degree scope into the cannula. Buttons are up, lateral thermal condyle is up, got to turn the water on to be able to see. So you can see there's no view there and then you can see the water coming in. We like to have bled that so there are no bubbles. So you can see the position of the uh, leg. He has the leg on his upper thigh holding the scope with one hand. Really need to manipulate the light cord with one hand as well. Looking at the patella, tracking of the patella, flex and extend the knee. We'll stop to take pictures on occasion. So now if he changes his hand to be underhand and puts his hand closer to the light cord, he can move the light cord around accordingly and free up his other hand to triangulate and do the work through the medial portal. Looking at the ligament of mucosum, fat pad is your enemy, you have to drive past or posterior to the fat pad to be able to see anterior cruciate ligament. We haven't established the medial portal yet. So his right leg has a little step up which ergonomically makes your calf not get too tired. Holding the scope with his right hand and now we're going to crank into valgus to open up that medial compartment and establish the medial working portal. You can see there's a little fragment of the meniscus that's flipped up in that posterior horn so that's consistent with his exam, MRI scan, and complaints. So we can see that we have a medial meniscus tear, posterior third. Medial femoral condyle looks pretty good. Take a couple of pictures and then we're going to establish our medial portal. The fat pad is in the lower left and we'll come in with a needle directly over the anterior horn of the medial meniscus. I like using horizontal incisions so that I don't injure the medial meniscus. So you can see the light that is shining in that medial side. He can push on it with his finger to triangulate to get that medial working portal in the correct spot. If you're going to do work, as in this case, getting back to the posterior horn of the medial meniscus, you need to be just above the medial meniscus, hugging that medial meniscus. So you can see the fat pad, the needle is through the fat pad, so we'll go just posterior to that for our incision or our mini arthrotomy. We want to make a big enough incision to be able to easily get the instruments in and out. Remove the spinal needle. Keep your eye on where you're going to be coming in. You don't need to change that and then put your knife under direct visualization through that to establish the medial portal. You can see we saw on that back and forth and flip it 180 degrees to make a big enough incision where water comes out and we can easily get our instruments in for our working portal. Now we have our probe in the medial portal that we just established. 
can see there's a little something maybe flipped under the meniscus there. The joint isn't well open, so we need to apply more valgus to be able to open up that joint so we don't do damage to his articular cartilage. There is a learning curve of how much valgus to apply, so you need to gently put a little more valgus so you can open them up, enabling you to do the work on the torn medial meniscus. Work on the light cord, looking in the back, and then you can see how it's a pretty tight knee. That's another important part of putting the leg holder down five finger breaths above the super patellar or above the patella. And so now we're probing it. So this is a degenerative tibial sided medial meniscus tear. And a cyst is more mid medial, it isn't uh, the typical Baker cyst, which comes off the back and propagates through the capsule. So probing that, you can see how it's all wispy. Uh, fortunately, the root is intact. So now we have a curved motorized shaver in, 3.5. And this one is a 4.5. They come in several different sizes. As you can see now, he's in more valgus, applying more valgus, so we have a better opening and better access to that posterior third of the medial meniscus. The shaver blade is on the torn meniscus, not on the articular cartilage. And in some of these tears that are chronic, uh, using your shaver can better define the tear pattern. Typically it's the tibial side that's the unstable side. So after performing arthroscopic partial medial meniscectomy, we'll probe it over the root attachment. Tibial eminence is right in front of us. A little undulation or flounce to that uh, medial meniscus. So I have taken the scope now. Resident is observing using the motorized shaver. We try to keep the instruments or the mayo close enough so we can put the instruments up on the mayo. Don't want to drop anything on the floor. Now I'm palpating that cyst to see if the cyst got any bigger. If the cyst got bigger, I was contemplating doing an open excision of the, of the cyst. So we'll probe the remainder of the, the rim of the meniscus, and you can see where there's still an undersurface, unstable, tibial-sided component that we'll need to look at and remove a little bit more on the tibial side. I try to estimate how much of the meniscus I take out. In this case, I took about 30% of it out. Our scope is lateral, working portal medial still. To get to the anterior third, we have to switch the scope medial and come in from the other side. So you can see where there's that tibial-sided, unstable, horizontal split in the meniscus. But looking at the posterior horn, that looks to be intact. So you can take a handheld punch, motorized resector, and complete the partial medial meniscectomy. If you have a lot of fragments, as in this case, you want to put a big cannula in and suction directly on the cannula. The curved shaver will tend to clog if you try to do all this with a shaver and you want to be as efficient as you can. So put that cannula in there, suction, suction those fragments out, and then this will be more efficient and less likely to clog your curved shaver. So we're pushing on the back of the knee and getting all those fragments of the meniscus out of there. So now we're completing our shaving. Uh, we've kind of used this as a dissector to take a little bit more of the tibial side. Again, the root is intact. And we're going to switch our scope to the other side to be able to better enter that mid-third medial meniscus where we need to take a little bit more. There's a back-biting handheld duckbill. And there's a left to the right, and this is the one to the left, so I'm trying to open the joint up enough to be able to basically, in a reverse way, remove part of that medial uh, meniscus. We can also do this by switching our scope, but you can see here where the reverse biter uh, works pretty well as well. So now we're going to put the scope back in the joints through the medial portal. We'll use our cannula and blunt obturator and not put the scope in by just pushing the scope in because we can ding the tip of the scope. So then gently 
push the obturator through and uh, put the scope in medial and this will give us a different access view of the medial meniscus that we need to remove a little bit more of the medial meniscus. So now we'll put the shaver in the lateral portal and you can see where we can easily access that mid anterior third of the meniscus where we need to complete the meniscectomy on the tibial side. A little different view of the meniscus tear. And we're looking to see if there's any swelling where the cyst is, and we just did a needle trephination of that. So I've got a needle in the medial side over where the cyst is, and we're trephinating this. There's a small little capsular rent where the fluid would leak from the meniscus tear out into the ganglion. So we can use a needle to trephinate this ganglion cyst, and we did not do an excision. So now we have the scope still medial. We're going to probe the lateral side. Got the fat pad in your face, and he drives posterior to the fat pad, and you can see the lateral meniscus that has a part that looks ligamentous. So oftentimes by MRI scan, there'll be a read of anterior horn lateral meniscus tear which is usually not the case. So at the end of the procedure, you want to use the remainder of your water just to suction out the knee. Maybe you have some, some fragments that are still in there from your meniscal shavings. So just put the sucker directly on that metal cannula, large cannula. So now we will close our portals with a nylon suture, mattress fashion, to reduce any leakage of fluid and blood because you'll get called in the middle of the night. I just use nylon because in the past when I've used Vicryl, sometimes they will spit that and it's hard to tell if there's a superficial infection. So just um, close your portals with a mattress um, suture. Make sure your loop up on the top part is far enough apart so it's easy to get the sutures out. Close the medial portal. And you don't really need to put any stair strips on there, but I do pad this very well with Adaptix 4x4's soft roll ace wrap. I do inject intraarticularly with Marcane. You can go through the portal after you close it. You can also use your cannula to go through. Sometimes the medicine will tend to leak out through the portals. So now we just take the drapes off. And put our sterile dressing on there of Adaptix 4x4's ABDs. And then the ace wrap should be applied not too tight, but from the mid calf to the upper thigh. Our tourniquet is still up. As you can see, the Lanny Johnson leg holder is still on the leg, and that would be a tourniquet effect if we put the tourniquet down now. So we'll take the leg holder off before it. Letting the tourniquet down, and this is the Lanny Johnson leg holder. Pat them up so they don't call you because they're bleeding. Just be careful when you take this Lanny Johnson leg holder off to hold the part that doesn't move up on the top. Take the rubber out. If you hold where the trombone effect is of that down where you put it onto the bed, you will pinch your fingers, and that's not a good thing. So now we'll get that leg holder off, again holding on to the part that doesn't move. Take the soft rubber padding out, and then let the tourniquet down. And again, ace wrap not too tight, just from the upper calf to mid thigh. 
And that's the left knee arthroscopy, partial medial meniscectomy.